We've had a tremendous response from people who've been writing in saying our village near us is lovely and wonderful and we think it would be a good thing for you yeah. to come and look at it. Yeah. If somebody's thinking about sending in the vi a village, mm. what sort of stuff would it be good for them to start looking at to get together so we have a bit more information at the start? Where, if you've got a village, w what's the process of beginning to look at it? I think the very first thing is see if there's a Victoria County history volume that covers your village. These were started in 1901. Most counties have at least one or two volumes. Some counties, like Somerset, have a lot of volumes. Uh, and because that will mean that a, an historian has been through all the main things and got the main guts of the history out. Really useful start. If you haven't got that, there are other things you can do, but the, if, 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 if you have then the second stage, I think is always to go and get the tithe map out. These, these are maps compiled in the, uh, well as a result of the 1835 Tithe Commutation Act, so the maps are all about 1840, and they are the first large-scale detailed maps that covers most of the country. And where would you get them from? And they are usually in the county record office of the historic counties. I mean, I'm a bit of a heretic. I don't bother with all these modern units, you know. You've got, Somerset's got all sorts of units, but the historic county of Somerset, the record office is in Taunton. In Gloucestershire, it's in Gloucester. In Dorset, it's in Dorchester, you know, and they will have all these maps. And the tithe map will have that interesting thing of being both a map and an apportionment? Uh, yeah, the, the award, which tells you the landowners, the tenants, uh, the areas of the field and what's been grown at the time and most importantly for, for local research it gives you the field name and often that that is the first time we hear of the name of fields and often it's the name that the farmers still use you know it might be 200 years old now nearly 200 years old but often that name goes back hundreds of years before that so you've got your tithe map you've got the apportionment you've got yep. your names of your field what's the next set of paperwork that you ought to be moving towards to collect together uh, well the, it, while you're in the record office they will be able to tell you whether there are any maps earlier than 1840 and uh, there aren't that many but but you you'd be you'd be reasonably lucky if there was an 18th century map of all or party parish, perhaps done for a big estate. You know, a big estate landowner has his land surveyed. So if you get a map of 1750, 1780, that can be fantastically useful. If you're really, really lucky, there'll be a map in the 1600s. Uh, I mean, for example, if the, if your uh, parish or village or, or local area was owned by an Oxford or Cambridge college, then there might even be a map back to the 1500s. And that's absolutely fantastic if you get that. And going the other way, you often talk about a run of OS maps. That's right, because the, the Ordnance Survey, uh, who begin work in the early 1800s, they start to produce really large-scale detailed maps. And the best series of all are really the, those done in the 1880s. So 1885, 1886, something like that, which are done at both 25 inch to the mile and reduced to 6 inch to the mile, which is roughly 1 to 10,000. And they are superb maps. I still think they're the best maps the Ordnance Survey have ever produced because they're so detailed. They actually give individual trees in some cases and individual little houses. And, and then are, there's a run from then on. Uh, they come in 1903, there's a second edition, the 1930s there's an edition. And if you get that, combined with the tithe map and any other earlier map, then you start to see the later changes in the landscape. The real skill is to take your earliest map, produce it at something like one to 10,000, one to 25,000, and then leap backwards and try and draw yourself a map of 1500, 1200, 800. I, I recommend glasses of Cabernet Sauvignon to do this because it sort of helps the, the, the thinking process. And uh, I, I remember seeing you with sheets of um, tracing paper. Oh yeah, well I'm very old fashioned to you now. No, but, but you, you'd got your tracing paper, you'd drawn the roads from the earlier map, yeah. and then the yeah. same scale, and then yeah. you'd drop them over the modern map so you could yeah. sort of see some of those early patterns. Yeah, well if you, I mean, it, it, 
it's part it's that business about when you take a photograph you don't see the detail if you paint it or sketch it you do and the same applies to this sort of work if you get a computer program to adjust the maps you don't see the detail if you laboriously copy one map to another one in other words you start with a modern map you put a piece of tracing paper on and you c copy the 1887 map. And you call this retrospective... Re re uh, re regressive map analysis. Regressive yeah. map analysis. But there always has to be the glass of Cabernet Sauvignon to the right-hand side. Mick. Two glasses of Cabernet Sauvignon, one map. Thank you very much. You have to go off and film. Two glasses, but one map. We'll come back each, and we'll ask some more questions of evening. Two glasses, on. one map. Each evening. Two glasses, one map. Sorry, taps.